If you've had surgery on your spine, should you be concerned if you ever develop clear fluid leaking from your incision? The answer is yes. Yesterday I presented the case of a 28 year old female who underwent a micro discectomy for a herniated disc. The surgery was relatively uneventful and she was discharged home the same day of the procedure. Three days after surgery, she noticed a clear fluid dripping from her incision as well as development of a severe headache. She also noticed some ringing in her ears. Many of you guys got the answer. This patient has a CSF leak and she's gonna have to have something done about it. When we do surgery for a herniated disc, we go down into the spine and retract the dura and the nerve roots to access the disc and remove the piece that's compressing the nerve. And that's true for a lot of spine surgery that we perform where we actually have to move, retract, or touch the dura which is the part of the spine where the nerves are carried. And the dura, or also called the thecal sac, contains cerebral spinal fluid. It's the blue stuff that you see here, and the yellow is all the nerves that float around in the spine. I like to describe the cauda equina, or the nerves that are in the lumbar spine, as little spaghetti noodles that are floating around in fluid. In this picture, you can see those little nerves that are floating around, and then the instruments that we are using to help retract and the dura or the tissue that's holding all of this in place can sometimes be really thin. So it's actually fairly common during spine surgery to encounter a CSF leak or where surgical instruments can tear a small hole in the dura. It's not malpractice, it's actually a very common complication of any type of spine procedure. Rates in the literature are all over the place, but I would say on average, the risk of developing a CSF leak from any spine operation is around 2%. The reasons why we get concerned about a patient leaking fluid through the skin is that you have the inside or the spinal fluid in continuity or touching the outside world. And that can potentially lead to a meningitis, which can be life-threatening. In addition to that, losing spinal fluid is not a good thing. She's got the headache and the ringing in her ears because of the leak, because the CSF space is in continuity with the brain. The symptoms of headache is because the brain is sagging and is not fully supported. Many of you may have heard of a spinal headache after having a lumbar puncture or spinal anesthesia for pregnancy. It can be done to obtain CSF for another medical reason as well, but that's when we take a needle and place it into the CSF space to obtain fluid or to inject medication. When you withdraw the needle, that tiny little hole can still leak fluid and cause the headache that I mentioned before. The treatment for that is classically hydration and lying flat in the bed to allow that hole to seal off on its own. And if it doesn't, it can be treated by what's called a blood patch, where you can take a needle, go into that epidural space and inject a small amount of blood that can cause some inflammation to help close off that small little defect. And that's usually pretty successful. I hate to say it, but most likely a blood patch or bed rest is not going to fix this situation that our patient is in. Remember, surgery is not risk-free and surgical complications happen all the time. No patient is perfect and no surgeon is perfect. And the best way to handle a complication is to identify it immediately because ignoring it is not gonna make it go away. This patient was admitted to the hospital and was taken for surgery the subsequent day to explore the surgical site and identify the CSF leak to close it. Interestingly enough, this patient had no CSF leak that was identified during her primary surgery and this happened after the surgery. It was either that the leak was so small that it wasn't identified or that there could have been a tiny little bone spicule that caused a hole or punctured a hole in the dura after the patient was closed up. This can happen in any patients, but patients that have tissues that are extremely thin can lead them to be more prone to this developing. Patients that are older, patients that have had prior surgery with scar tissue, patients with connective tissue disorders such as Erlo-Stanlos are at risk. Patients that have had multiple injections that contain steroids, such as lumbar epidural injections, that medication can cause the tissue to thin. In our patient's case, the patient was taken to surgery, the primary leak was identified and repaired. She was kept on flat bed rest overnight, and then she was subsequently discharged home the following day. Remember, not every leak is easy to repair, and it really depends on what the intraoperative findings are as to how that may be managed. Sometimes even multiple operations are needed. In some instances, the surgeon may choose to use what's called a lumbar drain, 
which is a small tubing that's inserted into the CSF space to divert the flow of fluid away from the repair. If placed, these are classically left in from anywhere from three to seven days after the repair. Not every leak is the same and some repairs can be extremely challenging to deal with. For our patient's sake at the beginning of this video, she did well without any long-term consequences of having to have this repair. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.